Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons or advancements. More like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I am your host, David, and joining me tonight, as always, we have Stuart and Scarecrow Hawk. Scarecrow. Scarecrow, dude. Scarecrow. <laughs> and hey, guys. <laughs> What's up, everyone? So, um, first up, I just want to say, make sure you keep an eye on the Save Sci-Fi Facebook page. We do a lot of stuff there. Recently, we just finished voting on the Ultimate Enemy Ship. Um, so, the Ultimate Enemy Ship, which is unnamed, we're about to discuss what name we should give it. I've given everyone about 12, 14 hours to comment different name suggestions up. We've got about a dozen to go through. But first, this is what it is. It's got a Shadow Cruiser is the hull. The power source is the zero point chamber that they had in Stargate Atlantis. So it's the room that can sort of draw energy from subspace up. Project Arcturus, effectively that chamber, um, but working because it's an evil ship, they don't care about the side effects. It's got the scimitar shields from Star Trek Next Gen. It's got the propulsion from Andromeda. It's got the jump drive from um, the Cylon base stars for FTL. Its sensors are, and I'm going to absolutely garble the crap out of this name. Um, and if anyone out there has watched Babylon 5, please forgive me. Just, just I beg, I beg of your forgiveness in advance. Um, Lyta with Volon upgrades. How, do you have you guys seen Fab Five? Do you know how to say that person's name? L Y T A. Lita. What? Lita. 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 Like, like a liter of milk. Pretty much. That's how it's pronounced. Okay. Leaving that alone. Um, the bridge design is a Super Star Destroyer. The primary weapons... Now, there's two different weapons on each of these ships. There's primary, which is specifically for the main weapon. When it In the shows, there's always one weapon, or movies, there's always one weapon the ship will primarily use. In Stargate, it's on the Battleless classes, it's effectively the railguns for the most, of the most of the time the ship's in service. For Star Trek, it's effectively phases. Um, in Star Wars, it's turbo lasers. And then there's the secondary weapons, which are sort of the longer range, more powerful hitting weapons like photon torpedoes and that sort of thing. Stuff, And that's why this ship has got a primary weapon which sounds weaker and a secondary weapon which sounds stronger because it's effectively how I broke it down. So the primary weapons are turbo lasers from Star Wars. The secondary weapon is the shadow cutting beam, which... I would rate on par with the Ori cutting beam from SG-1 just so that we've got a power basis since Babylon 5 didn't have shields. Um, the computer system is the computer system from the Cylon base star. Um, the fighter escort is Wraith Darts and the repair droids are replicators, as in replicator spiders, reprogrammed to repair the ship. So that's the ship. And I actually think it come up pretty good. It's balanced fairly well across many, many series. So we've got um, Babylon 5, Atlantis, Star Trek, Andromeda, Battlestar, more Babylon, Star Wars, Star Wars, Babylon, Battlestar, Stargate, Stargate. So yeah, it's fairly well balanced. Um, so the list of names we've got for the Shadow Run, Tenebris, I think that's how you say that one. That's, that's a mouthful. Uh, Spawn of Satan, Shadow of Death, The Annihilator, Wrath of the Emperor, and Vengeance. So, I'll start with Stuart. What do you think we should name this thing, based on the suggested names we've got? Uh, joke, jokingly, I love uh, Spawn of Satan, because it, just, it reminds me of a mental image. But, um, I like Tenebris, so that's my vote. Fair enough. What about you? Uh, fair enough. What about you, uh, Gecko? I'm actually torn between two. You are? Some, somewhat torn between Wrath of the Emperor 
Although it does require clarification on which particular emperor. There's been a few of them. <laughs> I'm assuming it's the emperor from Star Wars because when people say the emperor in relation to sci-fi, that's the person they generally refer to. It's either they either see it as that or the emperor of mankind from Warhammer. Oh. Yeah, but that's Warhammer. That's... It doesn't count. I have some bad Warhammer jokes with the Emperor. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's one I'm torn on. And Tenebris, again, it's a pretty good name. It just... I don't know. It actually sounds somewhat good. Well, I like it because it almost sounds alien. Like, if this is an enemy spaceship from God knows where space... It's unlikely to be called something that sort of makes sense in English. And I know Tenebris is technically English, and it sort of means shadows and darkness and that sort of thing, which is really, really cool. Um, but, yeah, it's, to me, there's a lot of good names. Um, I like Tenebris. Um, Vengeance, I don't mind. Um, but, yeah, well, Tenebris is on everybody's lips, so... Do you reckon we just go with that? As well. Happy. Sounds good to me. So, the Tenebris it is. So, yeah, anyway, I'll be putting, I'll be updating the um, Facebook page with details um, as soon as the podcast's over. So, we'll have a new splash and everything up. Once, I've, once that's done, I'll just have to change, um, put the name into it. Anyway, the second half of this is... <laughs> Who would win? Our ultimate good ship or the ultimate evil ship? The, ulti- the ultimate good ship we voted on about 12 months ago, I think, voting started on it. It took ages to go through. So it's a Destiny-class ship. It's powered by zero-point modules. It's got star- It's got Atlantis's shields. It's powered by um, impulse engines. Um, its FTL style is the hyperdrive from Stargate. The ship senses is Heimdall from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You, the dude with the sword on the lookout sort of stands there and can see effectively everything. The bridge design is the Enterprise E. Primary weapons are phasers. Secondary weapons are Lantian drones because yay. Um, the computer system is the Asgard core. The rev- repair robots are astromech droids and the fighter escort are the Vipers from Battlestar Galactica. So... Yeah, I reckon it'll be a really interesting fight. I think the Tenebris has Destiny on tonnage, easily. With Destiny being about... Well, actually, no. Destiny would probably have the Tenebris on tonnage. Because I think Destiny's meant to be, what, a, a click, click and a half long? Yeah, it's pretty big. Something some, something ridiculous. The... the Destiny's basically a super star destroyer, but non-evil. Yeah, and no one here is big. It's, it's smaller than a star destroyer, really. It's only sort of actually be comparable size to a star destroyer, I guess. Yeah, it's closer to the Imp Star Mark II. Yeah, the one from the New Hope and stuff. Um, the power saw the because the. Oh man, my brain just absolutely shut down. <laughs> Quick, get him some caffeine. Technical difficulties. Um, anyway, because Destiny is m- more massive and because it's powered by impulse engines, I reckon even though it would have a faster straight line speed, it would be far less agile than the Tenebris, especially with those Andromeda sublight engines, which sort of allow it to boost and sort of spin around and do all sorts of crazy screw you physics maneuvers and if destiny ever managed to get far enough away it could just use the jump drive to bounce back in front of it so i don't think destiny could be could sort of run away from this one oh sorry the infinity it's the infinity sorry i keep calling it destiny because that's the hull shape but it's technically called the ssf yeah ssf infinity save sci-fi infinity Okay, it, so. the Infinity comes across to me as more of a tank. Yeah. It's designed to take damage, insane amounts of damage, and still keep on going. The Atl- the Lantian drones are just brutal. Yeah. 
Well, but the one thing I've noticed with the Infinity's weapons is they are precision, precision, precision. Yeah. Versus um, the Tenebruses. Which is spray for prey mostly. Spray and prey for the turbo lasers. Sadly, they're not the most... Accurate? Accurate. That said, when you're aiming at a ship the size of Destiny, you don't really need to hit a giant floating space bun. Very true. But at the same point, if you can work out... if Say, with Heimdall on the sensors... Or as the sensors... Yeah. He could point out the most critical locations on the Tenebrous. Now, with the precision capabilities of the of the phasers and the the drones. the drones they could hit those critical points and knock out the power source or the engines or the shields yeah. quite easily and then it's just a straight out slugfest yeah well see the thing about the tenebris is because it's got the scimitar shields i acquiesced and allowed it to have because part of the scimitar shields is a cloaking capability at the same time I think it would come down to if Destiny could get a lock on it. If Destiny could get Infinity. a lock on it. Infinity. Infinity, sorry. Force of habit. Retarded. I'll get the frying pan out at this rate. <laughs> retarded, retarded, force of habit. Anyway, um, if Infinity got a lock really quickly before it could cloak, so say it jumps in that massive energy pulse, it gets a, gets a hit on it, um, then... Um, it stands a chance in sort of doing some damage. If uh, if the sorry brains died, Tenebrous. Sorry, it's been a very long day for me. I've been awake since three o'clock. It's now seven p.m. So it's like fourteen hours. Anyway, um, fourteen hours of picking heavy boxes. Not the point. If the Tenebrous can cloak and disappear, and because it can fire through its cloak, I think it would stand a chance of doing devastating damage to the in, to the um, infinity. What about you, Stuart? You've been sitting there hiding in the corner, too scared to. <laughs> well, uh, just letting you guys dissect it, and then I'll have my opinion at the end. Okay. Um, I think that um, the Tenebris is going to win. Um based on a few, uh, few uh, design uh, things uh, that in <laughs> design <I'm> features <laughs> thank you long day as well no coffee that infinity has at least I can get the name right <laughs> <laughs> um, one astromech droids if you blow those things off there's no repair units left yeah well, in all honesty, I'd, instead of the Astromex for Infinity, I'd rather see something along the lines of a nano skin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was up to the fans. They voted. They chose R2-D2, effectively. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody chooses R2-D2. R2. I don't! Yeah, well, you, you, that's you, though. <laughs> I'm strange. I think... When I think uh, ship armor, I think more along the lines of Talon. Yeah. Oh, Yes. Well, see, that's one of the things the the um, Tenebris has over Infinity, is that because it's a Shadow Cruiser, it's primarily organic. So any damage it takes, it can potentially heal on its own without need of anything to repair it. And if it does need repairs, it's got replicators, which you blow one of those things up, it just turns around and makes another one. Another thing I see, and I'm just going to make a really bad Star Wars joke, and I know you're all going to laugh, is about the turbo laces. Bad enough they spay and pray, just don't let a stormtrooper control them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then nothing will get hit ever. So, the stormtroopers are the ones who control them. Why do you think they always miss? It's <laughs> a fair point. Um, so, yeah. So let's see, we've got... I reckon the Vipers would just eat the darts alive. Oh, I definitely agree on that. The Vipers... Yeah. Ooh, nasty thought. Oh. Is it possible to mount the drones to the Vipers? Oh, God. 
That's a scary, scary thought. I know, right? <laughs> That's a very scary thought. Well, I'm sort of going with the the Vipers have got standard Viper outfit. I'm not going to turn them into Viper jumpers. Uh, uh, vipers wouldn't be able to guide them. Yeah. But with a well, data link back to the Infinity to control them, it would a Viper in close launching the drone in close. As you mount them over the wingtips, they can go out the standard Viper launch tubes. Yeah. Or you could you could easily mount them in the missile rack underneath the on the bottom side of the vipers. Exactly. They wouldn't be able to carry many, just one or two of them, but still. Yeah. That isn't that's no different than equipping them with ant with uh torpedoes. Exactly. But yeah, that would be an absolutely brutal fight to watch. So like I, said, I still think it would come down to how fast can the Tenebrous cloak. If it can cloak and disappear, it's far more maneuverable thanks to those Andromeda engines. I don't think Infinity would stand a chance in hell. Because even if it managed to get a lock, by the time it sent the drones in that direction, because drones aren't an insta-hit weapon, they take a bit of time to sort of get going, head in the right direction. If that ship sees them coming, it jumps. It's now somewhere else. And... That delay, I think, would be the key sort of weakness. It could jump, shoot the ever-loving crap out of the side of Infinity, jump again, shoot some more, jump again, shoot some more, and just wear it down. And whereas Infinity would have to get really lucky with the drones, or have the Vipers right then at there to take it out really quickly, which I don't think would happen. So I'd have to say Tenebris would probably win, which would be spectacular to watch. Also depends on um, one other thing. Little known fact of the Star Trek phases. Yeah, if they're on the right frequency, they can cut straight through the shields. Not so much that. Um, there is a little known and very rarely used mode to them, especially next generation ones. That's from some of the books I've read in that universe. Not used in the TV shows at all, but they do have a point defense mode where the phaser arrays can just spray out beams in every random direction and even cloak that will still uh, beam hitting and dispersing in an area may just be enough for them to get a target lock. Yeah, I, I think I've actually se seen them do that in next gen. No, they don't do it in next gen. They do it once in Voyager. And then it was that that gave spawn to the new movie's um, phaser design. Yeah. Where it just sort of goes... Pew, 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 pew. I just yeah. remember a shot of the, the laser bank firing like 50 laser shots in rapid succession. Yeah, that's pretty the, much point this. defense mode. Yeah. It's, and they, as lasers, as energy beams in space, they still go a piss ton of a way. Yeah. So it's like a phalanx close-in weapon system on steroids, really. Yeah. And if a, if a number of them just disappear or dissipate on the cloaking shields of the yeah, Tenebrous, rough, rough idea you've got enough is. of a rough idea to vector your vipers carrying the drones the drones in to get close. Yeah. And hope And then they can't see enough. it coming. They don't see the drones coming. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, um Stuart any last thoughts on what you reckon would happen? Um, ooh, sorry about that. Voice is playing up a bit. Um, yeah, um, I agree with the um, the cloaking device, depending on how quick it, um, they can go in and out of um, yeah. uh, cloaking, and if it can be um, disabled by shots as well, because then that would be a huge uh, blow as well. Yeah. Because if well, they take that down, that would uh, uh, drop their maneuver really... Uh, maneuverability down. Yeah. Well, um, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've watched that the Star Trek movie which had that in it. What what movie was that again? Nemesis. Nemesis. That's It's been a long time since I've watched Nemesis. So I can't actually remember the properties of the cloaking device and how they actually finally pinned the damn thing down. If I remember they ram it. Yeah, I, I was about to say, if I remember correctly, Enterprise gets its ass kicked and the other guy is so overconfident he just decloaks in front of them and they go... And ramming speed. 
And he's like, well, shit. <laughs> the funny thing was, at the time of Nemesis, the Enterprise was old tech. Yeah. Because, um, don't forget, the start of Nemesis, that uh, Janeway was on the screens. Yeah. Which means Enterprise had not yet been updated with the technology that Voyager had brought back with her. Yeah. Like the ablative armor and the ad- more advanced shielding and stuff like that. Yeah. Which... So, technically, the Nemesis kicked the shit out of an out-of-date ship. Yeah, but it was still technically the flagship. No, flagship, all yes. All about that one. <laughs> all it, all the ass kicking did was gave them a reason to drag it back into space stock and rep- and upgrade the damn yeah. thing. Upgrading. <laughs> Modifications. Uh, uh, anyway. I wouldn't like to. I wouldn't like to face off a post repair enterprise. Is looks. <laughs> was that Scooby Doo? Zoinks. Yes. Yeah, you can blame my girlfriend. She went. Uh, oh. She was. She went on. She went on the Scooby Doo coaster yesterday, and it, <laughs> I kind of get some interesting messages when she goes on that. Okay, leaving that alone. That a, you have a girlfriend. I call hacks, and b. You've met her, you twit. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. They're not meant to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it's about oh, time as jump... to my um dis- my yes, your thoughts conclusion. on I forgot to get your conclusion. who would win. Personally, I think it will most likely come out to a tie, dependent on the crews. Yeah. So depending on who the crew for the vessels are will determine the end result. But just straight on stats, I'd say a tie. The Infinity can take more damage than the Tenebris. But the Tenebrous can deal more. I think they'd probably just take each other out. Yeah. Again, spectacular. Yeah. And for those that are wondering who the crew of the Tenebrous are, we haven't actually voted on that yet. That voting will actually be starting next week. So sit down and rat it out. You can look at the old crew, which um, I've actually got in a picture just over there. I can't make out half of them. Um, if I remember correctly, it goes, ship's captain was Jean-Luc card first oh. officer was spock uh weapons officer was tilk ship's ai was romy ship's counselor was yoda uh person helm control was wash comms officer was daniel jackson chief science officer type sciency officer was the doctor um ship's engineer was crap i've forgotten her name from firefly um kaylee Kaylee from Firefly. Um, the Doctor was the emergency medical hologram from Voyager. The CAG, the leader of the air wing, was Starbuck from Battlestar Galactica. And last but not least was Chief Security Officer, which was Ronan Dex, because having, it's Ronan. having Ronan on the same ship as Picard would lead to the most hilarious discussions ever. No, no, no. Ron- Ronan and Spock would be funnier. Uh, I just Ronan remember... and Teal'c having fun in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've actually Enough said. Been, uh, <laughs> I've got a brilliant mental image in my head of um the two ships fight out. It's a tie, and then just in comes a Borg invasion. <laughs> so. Borg comes in. Why are we fighting? Yeah. Get him. <laughs> so anyway, so that's the. That's the ultimate sh- um, good ship crew. So we're going to be starting work on the ultimate enemy ship crew starting next week. We're going to really quickly go away to a really quick ad break now just so that we can uh, sort out the next segment. We'll be back in about a minute. What's the best gift for the fangirl or fanboy in your life? Why passes to Hawaii Con, of course. The 2015 four-day pass is on sale now through December 31st and makes an amazing present that will give out-of-this-world memories. You can get an extra special present via the Kickstarter campaign where you can help pick the stars who will appear at the next event. You can choose stars from Doctor Who, Torchwood, Stargate, Firefly, and Farscape. To purchase tickets or more information on the event, visit HawaiiCon.com. Before, before there was dust, before the air became poison, 
before the companies. Strays, dragon smugglers and thieves. Will they prevail? www.thestarcrystal. Remember, dare to blink and it may all be gone. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Uh, right now we're moving on to segment two, which is The Librarian which is a new TV show by uh, TNT, if I remember correctly. Um, I made sure both these guys watched the pilot episode, episode one and two. So, what do you guys think? Gimme, 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 gimme. <laughs> sit, Boo Boo, sit. Oof. <laughs> no, I thought it was Nobody fantastic. It hit so many positives. Yeah. It's Basically, Indiana Jones meets Warehouse 13 with more badass. Yeah. Well, I was just about to say, the, the original librarian um, story actually begins in three different direct-to-TV movies, which were made about the same time that Stargate Atlantis was on TV, just to give you an idea of how long ago that was. Um, if I remember correctly, they were made between 2004 and 2009, the, the three of them. I can't remember the exact years or dates um and the main guy that's in it is if i remember correctly the same guy that was the dude in fa- the father in falling skies isn't he the main professor i think so i'm pretty sure it is um yeah. so i i watched the three movies recently just to sort of get an idea what the show was and they were pretty bad but they were very Warehouse 13. Now remember, these movies predate Warehouse 13, but they're both Warehouse 13 and The Librarian run on a Indiana Jones-style concept. So I won't call Warehouse 13 a Librarian ripoff. I won't call The Librarian a Warehouse 13 ripoff. They both rip off Indiana Jones. Except The Librarians are a lot closer to the indie yeah. feel because it's less cops tracking weird shit down. Yeah. Than it is a bunch of complete retards and assholes who have no right being able to figure out how to tie their own shoelaces doing it. Yeah. Well, um, the, th- the thing about Warehouse 13 is they went more on the sciencey side of things. Whereas the librarian tells almost a very similar story, but it tells but it on a very mystical side of things. So it's more of a fantasy leaning sort of thing. Um,. I really enjoyed the, the first episode, which is what made me want to watch the movies. I wish I didn't watch the movies. <laughs> the I'll movies grab them off dis- here next. Yeah, next, I see you. next anime night if I've still got them. Uh, the movies are disappointing. Yeah. The movies aren't worth watching. You can watch the, the, the TV show without watching the movies and miss nothing. <laughs> so the, the movies are worse than the Jaws sequels. Oh, good lord. Is that possible? No. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, but they are direct TV movies that give some of Sci-Fi Channel movies a run for their money. Oh, good grief! Yeah, that is shocking. But yeah, anyway, that, that, they're one of those things could be better, could be worse. But so, what do we think of the first episode? Let's move on from the movies, move on from Warehouse Thirteen and the Librarian, and move on to the actual episode itself. If you haven't seen it and you want to see it, consider this a spoiler warning. So, spoilers. I thought they were fantastically done. I loved the fact that the nuggets that were brought in are flawed and very human, which makes a change for most movies or, like, and TV shows on that. I like this. Um... And I got teary-eyed at the end when Cal passed. Yeah. Yeah. That was rough. That was good, yet rough. I don't... uh, I'll admit, I don't tear up in very many things. That made me tear up a lot. Yeah, that that definitely hit right in the feels. (sighs) But yeah. um, My favourite thing was the... um, The the chick in it. (laughs) The... She's like a... Sinus something or other. She's got multiple senses she can link together and sort of has this supercomputer style ability, which is really, really cool. 
Um, well, is she will eventually have to pay the cost. Yeah, the downside is that she's got a massive tumor in her brain, which is slowly but surely killing her, and she's only got about twelve months or so to live. So there's that. They introduced the equivalent of the bad guys in the series, which are named after animals, if I remember correctly. Are they the serpents? Yeah, that's them. And they've been again. You can't the trust a snake. <laughs> if you haven't learned this from Stargate, people, then you're really, really behind the times. Yeah, or Naruto. Um, oh. Right in the feels. Ouch. I think that was right between the uprights in the feels. Yeah. Oh, poor Rochimaru. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, he was a complete douche. Anyway, back on topic. Um, yeah. The, I'm definitely looking forward to next week's episode, well, this week's, technically, episode of The Librarian, and what we might do is if that's popular enough we might actually make the librarian a weekly discussion where we all make sure we've watched it and it sort of becomes the show of the week and if another sci-fi show comes along that's better we'll swap over to that we'll sort of have one segment just for whatever sci-fi show we happens to be airing and right now even though it's technically more fantasy than sci-fi it's the librarian it's the new warehouse 13 we can't avoid that comparison and between the two, I would actually put probably The Librarian as better, at least from what I've seen so far. It hit me a lot harder than what Warehouse 13 did. So, yeah. Anyway, Stuart, did you end up getting around to watching it? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, um, I really found it um, something really awesome, and I can't talk. Why can't I talk? Sentences and brain not working. <laughs> it's contagious. Uh, My just... brain shutdown disease is spreading through the internet. <laughs> 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 no, um, uh, I agree. The nuggets were cool. Um, I definitely, uh, f uh, in the feels at the end of that episode of the um of the two part episode was uh really really rough. And um, overall, I um, it definitely has Warehouse Thirteen and Indiana Jones uh, aspects to it. And I really find it really awesome, and I hope that it doesn't. I hope that it doesn't fall into the problem that Firefly did, that was so awesome, and then just got gets dropped. Yeah, yeah. The the one thing I think is that they did what very few shows managed to do in the pilot episode. Very few shows managed to draw you into that point and set up the story so well. Um. That y there's going to be a lot of people comparing it to Warehouse 13 because it is effectively the same concept. Guy goes out, well, team goes out, finds thing, item of the week, and I'm sort of on one end hoping they avoid the item of the week cliche. Um, because while that works for a, a while, it doesn't work for long term storytelling. It's why every single show starts off with item of the week because it's easy to write until they get the fan base. And then once they work out what the what they're doing, they move on to problem of the season. And that's well, they've already set curious. up the problem of the season, getting back to the freaking library. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm hoping that actually becomes more of a problem of the the series. The end game of the whole series is reconnecting to the library. I'm hoping that's what that is because that'd be really cool and i actually and the think... only way i can see item of the week working with this is if item of the week provides the magical equipment they need to eventually access it some will be false start some will be the, what they need yeah or lead to the next piece sort of thing yeah, make it a exactly. giant goddamn treasure hunt <laughs> that'd be really oh wait cool. it already is <laughs> uh, and to be honest i love the reference to the library of alexandria did you guys pick up on that? Oh, yeah. yeah I, burning, I think, actually, I think I may have missed that. The burning of the first library. Oh, yeah. reference yes. to the Library of Alexandria yeah, and the sacking and destruction of the greatest repository of knowledge that ever existed until the internet came along. There was so much stuff lost when that place was destroyed that... Even now, if I had a TARDIS, my number one stop would be that place about two weeks before it was burnt down so that I could get every manuscript I possibly could into uh, the TARDIS. If we had a TARDIS, I would be hiring a 
certain crew to pull this off. <laughs> now, let's go get Danny Ocean and his boys. Because <laughs> I think they will probably be the, the only ones that could probably clear out the entire museum without the museum knowing <laughs> that it's been cleared out into a TARDIS and then let us get back to the future without being detected. Yeah. Because so. even when they get detected, they do it with style. <laughs> They, they, they walk out and everybody's wearing togas and somehow they wear suits. Nobody notices. <laughs> they just stroll on through and everyone's just like, what the? Well, whatever. <laughs> Styling. <laughs> Styling profiling. Trendsetters. Oh, yeah. Better make a... <laughs> and they walk in with a spare one to make a donation at the <laughs> museum. <laughs> and then it cuts back to... We, we cut back to our time and they're digging through the rubble. They find, they've... they've they found a new section that they haven't excavated before, and they find the suit, and they're just like, what the hell? What? <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, librarian. Uh, I'm not sure actually sure what else we can sort of say about it without ruining the story, because I don't want to sort no, of you don't spoil it. it. I want you guys to sort of get out there and watch it, because it's a really good show, and it it's one of the few shows that I actually look forward to each week now, and that list of shows is so small right now, it's not funny. There's shows that I watch, but there's only a handful that I really look forward to. So, yeah. Anyway, we're going to jump away to another really quick break, and when we come back, we're going to have TV news. So, yeah, hope you look forward to that. And if you've been the fangirl or fanboy in your life, why passes to Hawaii Con, of course. The 2015 four day pass is on sale now through December 31st and makes an amazing present that will give out of this world memories. You can get an extra special present via the Kickstarter campaign where you can help pick the stars who will appear at the next event. You can choose stars from Doctor Who, Torchwood, Stargate, Firefly, and Farscape. To purchase tickets or more information on the event, visit hawaiicon.com. Before, before there was dust, before the air became poison, before the companies, strays, dragon smugglers, and thieves, will they prevail? WWW, the Star Crystal, remember. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, David, and we still have Stuart and Scarecrow with us. So right now we're moving on to Stuart's segment, which is TV news. It's where we bring you all of this week's news that's come out about all sorts of different things. But I just want to steal his thunder on, on the first one because I'm an evil bastard and that's what I do. Continuum. The one show that I had honestly given up for dead, I did not expect this when it came across my feed. Continuum has been renewed for a fourth and final season, which means that we'll get six episodes to sort of cap up the story, sort of what they did with Warehouse 13, which, to be perfectly honest, is better than nothing. So, um... Yeah, the way they ended it off Continuum, it wasn't very pretty. Yeah, so I'm really glad that we're getting that ending. Um, and that was the one piece of news that I saw that came through this week that really sort of made me stop, giggle, dance, and then calm myself back down and sit back down. So, yeah. Anyway, Stuart, it's over to you for the rest of the news. Alright, so, uh, first thing that I'm going to cover, and this literally came out, I, I think was a few hours after we finished the podcast last week. Yeah. Is that Mark Hamill is going to reprise his role as Trickster in in the Flat, in the new uh, Flash TV series. For those who don't know, he was the original uh, Trickster in the old series, who, uh, Barry's dad, the actor who's Barry's dad is the old Flash. So I'm, i Pray to the DC gods that they have some sort of interaction and have a little bit of fun with that. I got a sneaking suspicion they're trying to set this Flash up as a continuation of the other Flash. Because, uh, so we'll, we'll 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 touch on that at the end when we do, when we talk about the the season finale of Arrow and Flash. So 
Um, you'll have to hang in to hear our thoughts on that. But anyway, back to yep. the news. Alright, so um, I'm going to quickly cross over to Marvel for a bit and talk about the Sony hack. So oh, uh, yes. for, the, for those who didn't know last week, Sony got hacked uh, incredibly hard. And there has been uh, some info that was leaked that apparently Sony and Marvel were in talks so that Spidey could be in Captain America Civil War. Which would be fantastic. Unfortunately, yeah. it has since been revealed that those talks fell through. Yeah. But they're trying. Mm. They're well, really, see. really trying. And he's see. hoping that they allow Spidey to be in the Civil War because he was yes. a key part to that story. Well, yes, so. and... um. Yes, well, uh, for those who don't know, I'm about to drop a couple of spoilers. Spoiler! Oh. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of these tonight for them this segment. So oh, for yeah. those who don't ha know what happens in Civil War, they kill off Captain America. And about half the Avengers. <laughs> Which then yeah. leads into the Infinity War, where they kill the rest of them. And the interesting thing with uh, Spidey in this is Spidey, um, when he was involved in Civil War, is he was actually he actually went to the wrong side. He actually joined the evil side for a bit, but then came back to the good side. So, what I think they're going to do if they don't get Spidey anyway, is that the just just so people understand the good and evil side. What happened in Civil in the Civil War storyline, and this is probably oh. some major spoilers for the movie. Jeez, so if I've you got it. Want to know? Close your ears. <laughs> oh, uh, Civil War storyline: Iron Man and Captain America go to blows against each other. Iron Man, if I remember correctly, was in favor of superhero registration. Yes. And Captain America is against superhero registration. And as a result, they come to blows against each other. Um, we'll talk about. Superhero registration is its own topic down the line, so we're going to sort of leave that alone yeah, yeah. for now. But, but uh, what... Spidey was effectively their conscience. Mm. He started off on Iron Man's side after revealing his identity to the world. It's the first time in any of the Spidey comics he's revealed it to everybody. And if I remember correctly, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, tell me in the comments, okay? My bad if I'm wrong. But my understanding is it was the first time he did that. No, you're right, it is, it is actually the first time. There's no other comics that uh, everyone knew that Pity Park was Spidey. It was, it was one during the Civil War, so... Yeah, and then after a while he realises that Iron Man's actually on the wrong side of this thing, and he swaps to Cap's side, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes, he, and, he, he goes um, over. That's when it all goes to, to hell in a handbasket. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be so, it's gonna be interesting to see how they play that out in the movie, so... Yeah. Well, what I think they're going to do, if they can't get Spidey, they're going to use um, Black Panther. Yeah. Either Black Panther or Doctor Strange. One of the two. Because both of them are going to be established by then as characters. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, keeping... Cover patch as Doctor Strange. Oh, Thank my God. Thank you, Marvel. Yes, well, we knew it was coming. <laughs> We've been... Peep it, he's been theorised as that for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, put it this way. When Marvel comes knocking, I don't know a single actor that would say no. No. <laughs> because Marvel is such a juggernaut now. It's got such a screen presence in so many living rooms that you wouldn't want to say no. Because it's not just a role that you'll get. You'll... Assuming your character doesn't die, which admittedly, if you're the star of the movie, won't happen, but if you're not the star of the movie, good luck with that, um, then you'll be back for two or three movies, or even the TV series Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. There's such a large universe they're playing with that it's sort of really hard to sort of not see characters coming back in other forms. So, yeah, anyway, continue with the news! Yep, uh, what have I got next? There's like so much to cover. Ah! I'm going to jump back over to DC, and I'm going to talk about a potential Teen Titans TV series. Live action TV oh, series. Oh yes, live action, by the way. So, for those who don't know what the t who the Teen Titans are, Teen Titans are originally before New... So, I'll go pre-52, uh, New 52, then I'll go into New 52, because it changes. So, pre-New 52... 
uh, was the leader was uh, Dick Grayson, uh, who ends up becoming Nightwing. Um, the team consisted of Starfire, Raven, Cyborg, Beast Boy, and and Robin. Yeah. So um, the, now this is where it gets tricky because they apparently are going to go that they're going to use that um, that version of Teen Titans. In New Fifty Two, they changed it up a bit. The New Fifty Two Teen Titans is actually uh, run by um, Tim Drake, who's Red Robin. He was the third Robin after um, yeah. Jason Todd. That, the Red Robin movie, if you haven't seen it, is actually probably one of the best. Red Batman Robin doesn't have movies. a movie. Oh, sorry, Red yeah, Hood. I'm thinking. Red Hood and Red Hood. Yeah, under the Red Hood. Yeah, yeah my it's bad. Really amazing. My bad. They had a really awesome. They were a really awesome um, yeah. uh, voice for Jason Todd there. But um, it's it's so uh, uh, the new Fifty Two version is uh, Red Robin, uh, uh, Superboy, uh, Kid Flash, which so isn't effectively they went for a Young Justice League. Well, there, yeah. See the thing is, there is a TV show called Young Justice. I'm well that's aware a of that. separate. That's a separate thing to um Teen Titans. So, yeah. but but the it's, th- it's effectively Kid Batman, Kid Superman, Kid Flash. Yeah, that's half the, the bloody Justice League as yeah, kids. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, the reason why I think they use they're using the pre New Fifty Two version is that a couple of uh, things happen. One in in the New Fifty Two version, uh, they kill a Superboy. Like they literally just kill him off. They use him as a as a sacrificial lamb. Nice. Also, and they follow this on from Young Justice is that uh, Kid Flash is not Wally West. They killed Wally West off at the end of Young Justice, and made Impulse the new Kid Flash. Which, speaking of Impulse, I'm going to be talking about at the end. Yeah. Because um, I have a theory about um with yeah. Flash. Yeah. Save it for the end. I will, I will. But um, I like the idea of this. I'm finally happy that the, that the sidekicks are finally getting something at last. I have been begging for a while that we that the, the um the sidekicks will be getting um, even, whether just a reboot or a TV show or, or live action. So I'm happy with that. There hasn't been a cast announced yet, or not that I've been able to find. So I'm not able to give details on who's playing what role yet. We'll, we, we, we'll do that in the podcast as soon as the news comes out. Yep. So, I think uh, the, the last piece is probably the second biggest piece, and I know you saved it to last because you're evil, evil, evil. <laughs> the mid-season finales of Arrow and The Flash. No, you're an idiot. You failed. You're fired. You're no longer doing news. I'm <laughs> talking Krypton on sci-fi. Oh, yes. No, I forgot Krypton. Krypton's awesome. You're fired. Uh, you're yeah, fired. I am. Go, just, just go away. You're fired. <laughs> See, this time I'm not the one who got. <laughs> I stuffed up. I stuffed up. I completely forgot about Krypton, and I had that in my notes. So Krypton is a, a, a show that's going on the Sci-Fi Network. Obviously, when it comes to Krypton, we know what exactly what it's about straight away. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure it's about Batman. Well. <laughs> no. <laughs> um. So what Krypton? Uh. So what we think is going to happen is that it's going to um involve the House of L. Uh. So like Kal El, Joel, everyone like that, as well, including sm- um uh Clark growing up on uh, with the Kents on, in Smallville. What I think they're gonna, I th- what I would like to see happen before they send Clark off is do a do a bit um. Might merely be half a season, a full season. I don't know what their plans are, but do a, at least a solid chunk of, of of the first season, setting it up the part where they send Clark off to off to Earth. Well, what I would love to see is actually because they've never really done a backstory on Krypton properly, as far as I'm aware. I would love to see Krypton being the fall of Krypton, so that the the TV series ends where Smallville begins, effectively. Would where is what I would love to see, and I know Smallville and Krypton are two totally different series. Oh yes. And I don't actually, I haven't actually had a chance to look into Krypton, so I could have the details all wrong. But I would love to see something like that as telling the story of Krypton, the people of Krypton, and the series finishes as Krypton crumbles. 
Bulls, yes. And at the end, the last thing you see is Clark disappearing into the distance in the pod. And that's sort of the, the done, the end. Or continues in Smallville, or continues in Batman versus Superman Rise of Justice, or whatever the bloody hell that thing's going to be. Well, they, they may they may do something with that, actually. But um, That'd be cool. I, they definitely need to do something for a backstory for Krypton, because there really isn't much. Yeah. There's not, especially because there's not much with on Kara's side of things. Obviously, there's not much with Clark. Obviously, even though he has his um, he's a baby. fortress of, well, I was going to say his fortress of solitude, but he's there's still not much even there that he gets from um, uh, uh Toronto, So yeah. Um. Okay, so this brings us into the final topic: the mid is the mid season finale of Arrow and Flash. What do we want to do first, Arrow or Flash? We've got less than ten minutes. We've got about four minutes. Yeah, Five I can minutes. do. I can do quick. Um, I'll go Flash quickly. Yep. So, uh, mid-season finale of Flash is that we get to see uh, Reverse Flash with Professor Zoom. Yeah. So what? Uh, okay, before I even get anything, I'm about to drop probably two, three or four big spoilers. So, if you don't want to hear spoilers, our two visitors, Scott and Guest. Feel free to Leave. run away. <laughs> yeah. So it was revealed that the I've forgotten his character name, but the Professor dude. Yeah, the professor in the wheelchair is Reverse Flash. So it, it is revealed at the very end of the episode that he is Reverse Flash. What Are happens? We... Oh, you go. Are we sure he's Reverse Flash? Yes. What hap- have you well, at the end of the episode? I know, I, know sh- that, I know he finds the suit and he puts the doodad on the outside of the suit, but no, no, he uh, he actually talks and he actually actually does the vo- he actually does the voice, so it is actually him. Oh, it, is, yeah. it is actually him. Like he um he puts the um he puts what is it um uh the tachyon yeah, yeah he puts the tach yeah tachyon on the suit and then in the like the jabbled up speedy voice that they do yeah. to uh, hide themselves. He, he, um, it's his voice. Yeah. Okay. And now, this is where it gets interesting. Barry, when he was, when he was, um, chasing after Professor Zoom, notices something interesting. When his mother was killed, there was two colors of lightning. There was a yellow and there was a red. And this is where I think it ties into the original Flash show. I suspect the red flash there is Barry's dad. That is why Barry was whisked out onto the street. Possibly. That's See, this my, is what, that's what I suspect. This is my opinion. I think that, and he says that there's a second speedster. I think the second speedster is Impulse. Impulse. No, so, that's Flash's sidekicky, isn't it? Uh, no. no. Grand, uh, Impulse is actually Bar- Barry's grandson in the future. Ah. So I think I think it's I think it's a brilliant way to bring into Impulse, who, who ends up becoming Kid Flash, who, who does become Flash's psychic. So I think that's how they're going to do it. Yeah. All right. Moving over to Arrow. What happens in Arrow season finale? Really quickly, is they find out who who killed Sarah. Yeah. This is get interesting. I uh, to be perfectly honest, I saw the premise of who killed Sarah coming from a mile away. It was pretty much a given for me. I, I, I suspected it from almost the minute that it happened. As soon as they showed the person in question, um, I'm trying to say this without spoiling it for those who haven't seen it. The, the I'm going to spoil it, so I don't care. Oh, God damn it. Okay, <laughs> fine. Um, we, ever since we've seen Thea training my first thought was that's who it was admittedly i didn't pick the hypno plant drug thing but no i didn't see that that, that, that that came out of left field but the person who killed her i figured it was pretty much thea from the moment i saw her training yeah um but the ending ending the actual cause, yes cause the, the end because the flash didn't really end on a cliffhanger per se no. Arrow, on the other hand. Arrow, on the other hand. Now, that was a feel and a half. Yeah. That was straight in his feel. So, what happens at the end is that Oliver, 
um, the DNA that's found on the arrow is is Oliver's, but it's Theo who kills him. So Oliver uh, confronts Rage or Raj. I don't know yeah, how people Raj, say it. The 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 Raj al Ghul, the head of the assassins. The League of Assassins. League of Assassins. Yeah, him. Um, and they fight, and Oliver gets his ass kicked, which is 110 percent expected. Yeah. And so he gets stabbed, and then he gets uh, Sparta kicked off the cliff. Oh yeah. So. What I think, and, and I've seen a couple of fan outs for for what I think is going to happen, but I have a couple of theories. One, he goes into a Lazarus pit, and and comes back alive through a Lazarus pit. Two, Roy saves him. He only tells Roy where where, the, where he's going, no one else. And three, and this is a tad of a stretch. And I've only just saw this recently. This is a really big stretch. I think. And this is a huge stretch. I possibly think that somehow Oliver's dad saves him. That last one would be interesting. He's blown his head off. I know, but it it what wouldn't suspect, surprise me. Or or it's Malcolm Merlin. Yeah. What I suspect is the person that will save him was that other assassin dude. Oh yes, I forgot about um the Asian dude. Yeah, him. Yes, I I even think of that. Wow, I I should have seen seen that coming a mile away. Yeah, that's that would make a, that would probably be what happened would make more sense. Yeah, I just want it to be something really cliffhanger and be excellent. Yeah, so uh, see that's the thing I find weird about um, DC, and I'm gonna go into a DC versus Marvel rant again. I'm sorry, and I know it happens every time we mention DC, but it's because DC has got so many different things happening at the same time. They've got um, they've got the Superman movie, which is different to the Arrow, which is different to um, Gotham, which is different to probably presumably different to um, the new one coming on Sci-Fi, which I've um, crypted, crypt on. Um, and whereas Marvel's done a fairly good job of keeping all of its eggs in a basket as soon as they had enough money to keep their eggs in a basket, that is. Um, and I would love to see that them Marvel try oh sorry DC try and bring all those shows together, and what I think would be an interesting twist, and it's because it was hinted at really early on, would be Oliver is saved by the Suicide Squad. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. But that would be cool. Yeah, and but totally but... out of left field and. The arrow does one thing well, and that's left field. No, the 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 problem with that is that they um with the Captain Boomerang when they did the crossover with um Flash uh, and the Boomerang, yeah, they said that the le- the Suicide, Suicide Squad, Squad was all killed. Yeah. So. But. I'm unless not... it's a way to bring in the new one. Exactly. Which would actually make perfect sense. Yeah. That's if they do that. Yeah. Either that or. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, final thoughts. Um, uh, Scarecrow has been silent because he didn't want to hear the the flash spoilers. I'm assuming he was listening anyway because he doesn't really make a choice. I was here, but I was zoned. <laughs> so, so final thoughts. Last minute. I will go with Scarecrow first. What about? Uh, final thoughts about everything. Final thoughts about everything. The Watch the librarians. Watch the librarians? Yep, and if you want something slightly different yet still kind of awesome, there is a uh, Transporter series. Season 2 is currently showing, if that's your sort of speed. Yeah. So, we'll, we'll get onto the Transporter at some point. It's <laughs> so many different things to talk about. Um, what about you, Stuart? What's your final, final thing? Uh... Final thing, definitely watch out for um, for when Flash and Arrow come back. I think DC have got something interesting, special planned, especially with Flash. Yeah, that's that's definitely going to be good. So anyway, this is uh, the Save Sci-Fi podcast signing out. Make sure you jump on Facebook and check out the Save Sci-Fi page. There's going to be a couple of cool pieces of art coming up, and uh, this weekend I think it is, or next weekend, one of the two is the Alternative Expo. Uh, this Saturday. This Saturday. Um, I'll do a quick R- plug for... Uh, at the yeah. Showground, we don't have time. 
at the RNA <laughs> Showgrounds. So um, there's going to be artwork there from us. So we'll see you there. Catch you later. Bye.